working to connect a region of over 600 million bridges between our lands. Mapa and welcome to ASEAN in Focus on today's headlines. Vietnam will lift coronavirus restrictions on international flights for fully vaccinated passengers from Tuesday. The World so Health Organization the... recognized and congratulated the Philippine government for being able to vaccinate at least 70% of its eligible population. Asia's biggest air show takes place in Singapore this week, with the aviation sector hoping 2022 marks a turning point in a region where tough curbs have left coronavirus battered airlines struggling to recover. The members. And Iglesia Ni Cristo members in Thailand conducted a coastal cleanup drive. First, the Philippines has already administered 130,741,152 doses of the COVID-19 vaccine with 61,058,862 Filipinos now fully vaccinated, including those who received the single-dose Janssen and Sputnik light jabs. Data from the National Task Force, or NTF, against COVID-19 on Sunday showed that 52,262 children aged 5 to 11 years old have also received their first dose of the reformulated Pfizer jabs and 8,011,994 have booster shots. NTF Chief Implementer and Vaccine Czar Secretary Carlito Galvez Jr. previously said vaccines would help in the revival of the country's economy and safely send children back to schools for physical classes. The emotional and mental impact of staying mostly at home for almost two years now will also be reduced, he added. For this month alone, the country received 5,906,550 COVID-19 doses, including the reformulated doses for the youngest age group. Three elementary schools here will implement limited face-to-face -face classes on Monday after finishing the simulation to determine solutions for possible problems. Angoyao Elementary School in Barangay Paridi, Mapandi Elementary School in Barangay Gadongan, and Nanapun Elementary School in Barangay Bangon all met the requirements for the resumption of physical classes. Dr. Ana Zinaida Unte Alonto, Schools Division Superintendent in Marawi said, the Bangsamoro Region's Ministry of Basic, Higher and Technical Education determined 27 schools are conducive for the face-to-face -face approach as they are low risk based on the assessment. The division opted to focus on the three schools first based on the number of vaccinated teachers, while those in far-flung communities will hone their preparations. Vietnam will lift coronavirus restric restrictions on international flights for fully vaccinated passengers from Tuesday, the country's aviation authority said in a statement. The communist nation has virtually closed itself to the world since March 2020 due to the pandemic dealing a severe blow to its vital tourism sector. Authorities have slowly eased the curbs in recent months, with visitors trickling in under a bubble arrangement since November. Starting Tuesday, Vietnam will lift restrictions on passenger carriage, on scheduled flights and non-scheduled flights, the Civil Aviation Authority said. The statement released Sunday did not say how many flights would be allowed to enter but indicated arrivals could be permitted to return to pre-pandemic levels. 
Anyone wanting to enter Vietnam must be fully vaccinated and will have to observe a three-day quarantine either at home or in a hotel according to regulations. Travelers must still abide by existing entry-exit regulations and pre-pandemic health care requirements, the authorities said. More than 90% of adults in the country have received two COVID-19 vaccine doses. The government is considering inoculating young teenagers as it accelerates the rollout of booster shots. Vietnam is currently reporting around 20,000 new daily cases and has recorded more than 2.5 million infections with nearly 39,000 deaths since the beginning of the pandemic. The World Health Organization recognized and congratulated the Philippine government for being able to vaccinate at least 70% of its eligible population, but stressed the need to vaccinate the 2.5 million senior citizens that had not received a primary dose. That's the Senate. So we congratulate the Philippine government for vaccinating over 60 million people so far. That is 70% of the eligible population over 12 years old. So that is really good. However, we also know that over 2.5 million senior citizens remain unvaccinated. They have not even uh, received a single dose. So vaccinating older people is one of the most impactful ways to save lives during this pandemic. We know that senior citizens are at high risk of developing severe disease, getting hospitalized and dying from COVID-19. With fewer restrictions and higher mobility happening now, we could be putting our unvaccinated senior citizens at risk of hospitalization and death. We appeal to the governors and mayors to do everything in their power to vaccinate our priority groups as soon as possible. The World Health Organization recognized and congratulated the Philippine government for being able to vaccinate at least 70% of its eligible population, but stressed the need to vaccinate the 2.5 million senior citizens that had not received a primary dose. Let's take a look. So we have a lot of uncertainties about the future evolution of this pandemic. It is very dangerous to assume that Omicron will be the last variant or that we are in the end game. New variants could emerge, uh, and they, these new variants could even evade our countermeasures, may even become fully resistant to the current vaccines, which will necessitate, necessitate uh, new, uh, vaccine adaptations. So although vaccine supplies have risen significantly everywhere, the African continent continues to struggle with vaccination rollout. As uh, you may know, the, the only 11% of the African population have, been, uh, have completed full vaccination, which means Less vaccination means more transmission there, and more transmission means we have high chances of new variants emerging there. But then this can cross over to any country. What happens in other countries affects the Philippines too, because we cannot virus-proof our international borders. So if other countries have low vaccination coverage and high transmission of the virus, yes, we expect that we could have new variants in the coming weeks or months. Let's hope that that doesn't happen. but. Let's be prepared for the worst. The Philippine National Police, or PNP, continues to see a decline in coronavirus disease 2019 cases among its ranks with only 258 active cases as of Monday. In its latest COVID-19 tracker, the PNP said this is lower than Sunday's 265 with only 10 new infections. Another 17 new recoveries raised the total recovery count to 48,353 out of a total of 48,739 confirmed log infections since the start of the pandemic in 2020. The death toll stands at 128. Meanwhile, fully vaccinated PNP personnel were placed at 97.6% or personnel out of a total of 224,875 personnel. Those who have yet to receive a second shot are at 2.04% or 4,595 and those unvaccinated are placed at 0.36% or equivalent to 794. Around 47.92% or 105,175 personnel have received booster doses.
and CNN Focus will be right back. Alam namin ang iyong pagsisikap. Dama namin ang iyong mga sakripisyo. Kita namin ang paghirap mo sa bawat pagsubok. Kaya sa kabila ng mga hamon ng buhay, nandito kami para umalalay. Kasi katulad mo, gusto rin namin ang magandang bukas para sa kanya. Hatid namin ang dekalidad na edukasyon at makabagong pasilidad sa abot kayang halaga. Kaya huwag ka na mangamba. Sasamahan ka namin ito pa rin ang mga pangarap niya. Maaasahan mong sulit dito ang mga pinagsikapan mo. Sa aming mga makabagong pasilidad at sistema ng edukasyon. May lalabas natin ang aking talino at mga kakayahan niya. Kahit sa munting halaga, makakasiguro ka na makakasabay siya sa mabilis na pag-ikot ng mundo. Sa new era, karamay mo kami sa bawat hamon. Kaagapay mo kami sa bawat hakbang. Kasama mo kami sa bawat niti at tagumpay. the program. Presidential candidate Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos Jr. and running mate Sara Duterte continued to be the top contenders for the May 9 elections according to the latest survey conducted by Pulse Asia from January 20 to 24 this year. Marcos widened his lead to 60% from 53% in the Pulse Asia survey for president held in December last year. He garnered the lead in all geographic areas and social economic groups with 53 to 66 percent and 50 to 61 percent respectively. Vice President Lenny Robredo is in far second with 16 percent or 4 percent lower than the previous survey. Former world boxing champion Manny Pacquiao and Manila Mayor Isco Moreno Domagoso are tied in third place with 8 percent while Senator Panfilo Lacson is in the fourth spot with 4%. Partido Reforma Standard Bearer Senator Pan Philippine Lacson said that the government could better help Filipinos by boosting their capacity building instead of passing regulations that lead to stagnation. The presidential aspirant made this pronouncement in front of 2,600 supporters at a school in Nawak, Davao de Oro, which he visited along with his running mate, Senate President Vicente Tito Soto III, over the weekend. In a news release, Laxon said the government should also be a better partner with the private sector instead of treating companies as competitors. 
For instance, the lawmakers said most local government units had no capacity in terms of long-term community planning or well-trained planning officers for their towns or cities. This is where the national government could intervene by sending LGU officers to the local government academy or the Development Academy of the Philippines, where they could study how to craft and implement plans properly for long-term progress. Presidential candidate Francisco Isco Moreno Domogoso eyes to revive the Marikina shoe industry in case he wins in the May 9 polls. His strategy would be to mandate the national government to procure locally made shoes in Marikina for public school students and government employees. The Manila mayor running mate Dr. Willie Ong and senatorial candidates Jopet Season, Carl Balita and Samira Gutok went around Quezon City on Saturday and Pasay City on Sunday. During their visit in Marikina last week, the Magoso held an informal dialogue with shoe manufacturers and workers and praised their craftsmanship. Marikina City, known as the shoe capital of the Philippines, is also home to the Museo ng Sapatos or Shoe Museum. Meanwhile, in Cambodia, where it is powering up its new national internet gateway, a move activists say will allow the government to further silence the country's embattled opposition voices. UN rights experts warn the gateway, which will funnel all web traffic through a state-controlled entry point from February 16, will have a devastating effect on privacy and free speech. It is the latest move by authoritarian ruler Hun Sen to clamp down on dissent in a country that has arrested dozens for online posts in recent years, critics say. Hip-hop artist Kea Sokun, whose lyrics about injustice and corruption have struck a chord with Cambodia's disaffected youth, was among those jailed. As his music clocked up the millions of views on YouTube, plainclothes police came knocking in September 2020. He was arrested and convicted of incitement, spending a year behind bars, and now fears the new gateway will lead to more people suffering the same fate. Last year, an autistic teenager, the son of a jailed opposition figure, was sentenced to eight months in jail for telegram messages deemed insulting to the government. Myanmar's junta on Saturday announced an amnesty for more than 800 prisoners as it held a parade and show of force in the capital to mark the country's Union Day. The country has been in turmoil since last year's coup with mass protests and a subsequent military crackdown that has killed more than 1,500 civilians, according to the UN's Human Rights Office. Junta Chief Min Ang Leng issued the pardon order, a regular feature of major holidays in the country. For 814 prisoners, state media said, marking the 75th Union Day. The annual holiday commemorates an agreement between independence hero Aung San and several ethnic groups to form a union of Burma independent of British rule. Those given amnesty will be mostly from prisons in commercial hub Yangon, Junta spokesperson Zhao Mintun told AFP. Four minibuses left the prison around noon local time and drove away with those inside waving as people in the crowd shouted the names of relatives. Taiwan shipping giant Evergreen Marine said on Thursday it would no longer send its ships to dock at a military-owned port terminal in Myanmar as a growing number of companies cut ties with junta-linked businesses. With the economy tanking and pressure mounting from rights groups, companies from France Total Energies to British American Tobacco and Norway's Telenor have up ticks or trying to live. Evergreen ships had occasionally docked at the military-owned Tidan Port Terminal in Yangon, the firm said Thursday, adding the arrangements had been made by a local partner contracted to service its vessels. It had since asked its partner to cancel that arrangement and had received a confirmation 
that would affect immediately Evergreen will no longer use Tidan Port Terminal. This statement did not say when or why Evergreen had made the request or if it would still send vessels to other ports on the country. The military has vested interests in large swaths of Myanmar's economy from mining to banking, oil and tourism. At least 10 Indonesians died after tidal waves swept away a group of people meditating on a beach during Sunday's early hours, police said. The group of 23 people was holding hands and meditating on Payangan Beach, East Java Province, shortly after midnight. Local police chief Harry Pornomo told Tivon that they were too close to the sea and could not save themselves when the tidal waves came and swept them away. Ten bodies had been retrieved from the ocean and 12 people rescued alive. One more person, a 40-year-old man, was still unaccounted for. It was unclear what kind of ritual the group was performing in the predominantly Muslim region, Purnamo said, but it was led by a spiritual guru who survived the incident and would be questioned. Regional Military Commander Batara Pangaribuan told Tivon that the beach was usually guarded and closed after dark, but the group somehow found a way onto it. Officials had warned visitors not to swim or get too close to the water because of the recent reports of high waves. And the news continues here in a CN in Focus after this short break. Meron lang ako isang katanungan sa iyo. Ano nga? Pogi ba ako? Huwag po kayong matakot. <laughs> under ka daw. Hindi. O oh, hindi yan under. O oh, bilisan mo diyan ah. Magpa-plancha ka pa tsaka magtutupi. Takot ba kay misis? Siyahin ka lang sana namin sa bahay. Ako. Oh. <laughs> Oo nga, mas takot nga ako sa misis ko. Wala ko yun. Takot ka bang makasira? Yan nga, di lang yun. Takot ka bang mapahiya? Galing lang, galing. Ready na ba kayo sa bago nating game? Maling. Enjoy your favorite OPM hits as we play them on air and online from music videos. Yeah, we gonna go up. To entertaining live and home performances of your favorite Pinoy artists. Now every step we take, how do we break? There's nothing we can do, do, do. Mag hashtag Sound Trip and Chill. Kasama ang barkada, ang letters and music. Saturday and Sunday, 1 p.m. only on Net 25. We are open for business, giving MSMEs the latest market trends and business opportunities. Open for business. Only a net 25.
Welcome back to the program. The ASEAN India High Level Conference on Renewable Energy, co organized by the Ministry of New and Renewable Energy and the Ministry of External Affairs of India, in collaboration with the ASEAN Center for Energy and the Energy and Resource Institute India, took place on February 7 to 8. The high level conference focused on the theme Experience and Innovations for Integrated Renewables Market and consisted of an inaugural ministerial session, five technical sessions, and a closing session. In his opening remarks, Secretary welcomed the high-level dignitaries from ASEAN member states to the inaugural ministerial session and set the context for the conference. In their special remarks, Tun Lin, Secretary of State, Ministry of Mines and Energy of Cambodia, and Sri Bhagwant Kumba, Minister of State for New and Renewable Energy and Fertilizers of India addressed the achievements in ASEAN and India and the need for carrying forward cooperation in the field of renewable energy to facilitate energy transitions in both regions. More than 1,000 participants from over 20 countries participated in the conference. The Philippine Overseas Employment Administration, or POEA, on Saturday said some 5,000 overseas Filipino workers are bound for Taiwan next week as borders reopen to certain countries on February 15. POEA Deputy Administrator William Moore Plan said the 5,000 workers are those whose visas were held prior to the deployment ban imposed by ta Taiwan last year. That's the Senate. This February 4, 15, mag-o-open na po ang Taiwan sa atin para sa deployments po natin. Kaso lang po, may mga nire-request sila. One of this is yung uh, guidelines po pagdating po sa mga quarantine protocols at saka mga require, additional requirements po para sa mga ating OFWs na pupunta po sa Taiwan. So ang ginawa namin, kaagarang gumawa kami ng uh, memorandum cir circular uh, para sa mga guidelines ng mga resumption para sa deployment po natin sa Taiwan. Uh, ang may, medyo kaibahan po nito is number one, uh, meron na po tayong checklist na kailangang pirmahan at saka kailangan pong i-monitor. Kaya ang medyo, ma, medyo makwan po ito, medyo uh, it's quite complex but since yun po ang request po ng uh, Taiwan government po sa atin, uh, kaagaran naman po natin ginawa para lang makapag-deploy po tayo doon. At saka pagdating naman po sa number of uh, uh, OFWs na kaya, na po, kaya po natin ipadala doon, uh, estimated po is about 40,000 po. But uh, as of now, meron na po tayong mga on the pipeline na about 5,000 workers going to, Chai going to Taiwan. Kasi po, uh, ito po yung mga 5,000 na workers na uh, na-hold po yung mga visa nila prior po doon sa deployment ban na in po ng Taiwan. In May 2021, Taiwan closed its borders to anyone without citizenship or an alien residency certificate. Its Central Epidemic Command Center or CECC announced on February 7th the next phase of allowing fully vaccinated migrant workers from the Philippines, Vietnam, Indonesia, and Thailand to enter Taiwan. Plan also reminded OFWs that protocol-related expenses will be shouldered either by the employer or recruitment agencies. Migrant workers shall quarantine for 14 days and stay at the same hotel for another seven days of self-health monitoring before going to their workplaces. Chen Shi Chun, CECC head, told Taiwan News that quarantine for overseas travelers will not be shortened until they have booster vaccine coverage of 50%, which they hope to achieve by March. Plan said several countries want to hire Filipinos, particularly in the health sector. Asia's biggest air show takes place in Singapore this week with the aviation sector hoping 2022 marks a turning point 
in a region where tough curbs have left coronavirus-battered airlines struggling to recover. There are positive signs for 2022. Several places such as Australia, New Zealand, and the Philippines are lifting bans on overseas visitors. But industry figures warn there is a long way to go. Lech Chetlam, Managing Director of the Air Show's organizer Xperia, said the event remains a platform for finding solutions so that we can be ready for the recovery. Here's Lech Chetlam. Okay, so we all know in this current environment, uh, yes, it, <clears throat> the attendance will surely be lower. That's the, that's the um, I think that's all of us will expect that. But as far as the quality is concerned, I'm not worried about that uh, because here we have assembled a high quality set of exhibitors. Uh, more than 70% of the top 20 global aerospace companies are here because the conversations will be just as good, even if not even better. Because right now, where we are starting to see green shoots in the industry, right, passenger travel numbers are up, um, flight frequencies are up, I think we can all sense the, the, the pent-up demand for travel. We also can see and sense the optimism. So I think it's even more important, more imperative that we set the platform of Singapore Air Show now to allow all these decision makers and top industry makers to come, have decisions, sorry, have discussions around them and how we can navigate our way out of this uh, pandemic. The event, which takes place every two years and kicks off on Tuesday, brings together hundreds of airlines, plane manufacturers, and other industry players to display their latest equipment, network, and strike deals. But the pandemic, which has been the biggest crisis to ever strike the sector, will cast a long shadow with industry leaders focused on the question of whether air travel will finally pick up in the Asia-Pacific. While the United States and Europe have eased restrictions and demand has rebounded, Asia lags far behind with foreign tourists, barred and mandatory quarantines still in place in many countries. Data highlights the slow pace of recovery. The region's airlines carried 16.7 million passengers last year, just 4.4% of volume seen in 2019, according to the Association of Asia-Pacific Airlines. With the Asia-Pacific rebound, Nascent and Singapore currently battling a fierce Omicron wave, the four-day air show is likely to be muted with about 600 companies taking part, down from over 900 at the last edition in 2020. Participants will be required to take daily virus tests, while the public have been barred from attending a series of aerial displays as authorities look to cut infection risks with the aerobatics instead to be live streamed. Nevertheless, key players such as Boeing Airbus and engine maker Rolls Royce will still be attending, and the show will be a rare opportunity to hold in person meetings with customers to drum up new business. Asian markets fell and oil prices rallied Monday after the United States warned Russia could attack Ukraine within days as diplomatic efforts to prevent a war appeared to fail, while fears over inflation were also keeping traders on edge. The losses matched a sell-off in New York and Europe on Friday as Western powers prepare for a conflict in Eastern Europe after Russian President Vladimir Putin dismissed calls by U.S. counterpart Joe Biden and others to pull back. Governments have told their citizens to leave Ukraine and U.S. National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan warned last week that an invasion could begin any day now and would likely start with a significant barrage of missiles and bomb attacks. The prospect of a conflict compounded to the gloomy mood on trading floors after data Thursday showed U.S. inflation hit a forecast busting 7.5% in January, ramping up pressure on the, Fed and the Federal Reserve to hike interest rates more than expected. After sharp losses on Friday on Wall Street, the losses continued in Asia. 
Tokyo and Seoul each shed more than 2%, while Hong Kong, Wellington and Taipei were more than 1% down. Shanghai and Singapore were also, felt, were also off, though Sydney and Manila edged up. And Ellie Lee at Bank of Singapore said, the volatility that has characterized markets so far this year would likely continue. As the host of APEC 2022, Thailand will kick off the first set of meetings this year to roll out the discussion on the theme and priorities and how to best achieve key deliverables throughout the year, according to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. The first APEC senior officials meeting and related meetings will be held fully virtually from 14th to 25th of February 2022. More than 30 working group meetings and seminars will be held throughout this period covering a range of issues from trade and investment to connectivity, digitalization, food security, health, environment and sustainable development. The outcomes of the discussion at the working group level will be reported to the senior officials meeting which will take place on 24th to 25th of February. And the news continues here in a CNN Focus. We'll be right back. Araw-araw may bagong kaalaman. Dahil sa Tony Knows, everybody knows! Oh! Your Kuya Tony Petgaba, na hindi naubusan ng tips. Siyempre, from DIY to life hacks, sagot ko na yan. Saan ka pa? Let's all play together. Let's have fun together. Tara na, sumali at makigulo sa aming kada challenge. Sa kada umaga, kompleto na ang inyong umaga. Maraming maraming salamat po, kapatid na Eduardo B. Manalo. Maraming maraming salamat po sa kapatid na Eduardo B. Manalo. Maraming maraming salamat po, kapatid na Eduardo B. Manalo. Karamihan na kami po'y hinahamak at tinataboy. Pero buong po sa inyo kaming tinanggap at kinukop. Kung dati, kung saan saan kami naninirahan, ngayon may permente na kaming tirahan. Maraming salamat sa kabuhayang pinagkaloob niyo. Hindi na po kami mangangamba sa aming kinabukasan. Maraming salamat po sa pagbibigay ng Nikeson sa amin upang matupad na ang aming mga pangarap. Mahal na mahal po namin kayo. Welcome back to the program. Honda's Paul Espagaro topped the timesheets as MotoGP preseason testing concluded in Indonesia on Sunday 
with the Spaniard declaring, I've never been so fast. Espargaro secured the third and final day honors on, on the all-new Mandalika circuit by a mere 0 0.014 seconds from Yamaha's defending world champion Fabio Quartararo. Espargaro's brother Alex rode his Aprilia into third with less than a second, covered the leading 20 riders. Former champion Joan Mir was forced to skip the session with a suspected bout of food poisoning. The new season opens in Qatar on March 6th with Indonesia hosting the second race a fortnight later. Philippine pole vaulter EJ Obina finished first in the 2022 Arlen Arlen Cup in Poland on Friday after clearing 5.81 meters on his first attempt. This is a major win for the 26-year-old Obina, who beat seven other pole vaulters, including 2020 Olympics bronze medalist Thiago Braz da Silva of Brazil, who finished second. Obina tried to reset his personal best, an Asian record of 5.93 meters, but failed to do so. Still, his victory at clearing 5.81 meters in one go at the international competition put the Philippines on the top spot. This is Obiena's first major win for 2022. Braz, the 2016 Summer Olympics champion, settled for second spot after clearing the 5.71 meter bar in one try. Piotr Lisek of Poland finished third after clearing 5.71 meters on the second attempt. The other competitors were three pole vaulters from Poland, one from Belarus, and one from China. Obiena will next compete in France next week at the meeting Haute de France on February 17th. At the Tokyo 2020 Olympics, Obiena advanced to the finals of the pole vault competition but failed to make a podium finish. He is the first Filipino pole vaulter to make it to the Olympics finals. And finally, in our news for today, Coastal Cleanup is an activity the Iglesia Ni Cristo members are engaging around the world. Its aim is also to engage worldwide to remove trash and debris from beaches, waterways, and other water sources. At the scene of this activity in Thailand is our correspondent, Jomerl Baldo. Members of the Iglesia Ni Cristo in Thailand has initiated voluntarily coastal cleanup drive under the INC Giving Program with the cooperation of FYM Foundation. The members from different areas of Metro Bangkok and in nearby provinces are gathered here in Bangsen Beach, Chonburi, Chonburi, Thailand, early in the morning to participate in the awareness campaign among people to keep our beaches clean, to make our environment safe for all people, and the awareness on the extent of the possible marine pollution. Bangsan Beach is located 108 kilometers of Bangkok, the Thailand's capital. It is also known for its line of palm trees and crystal clear water. Each year, especially before the pandemic, thousands of local and foreign tourists flock at this beach to swim, sunbathe, eat fresh seafood, and have loads of fun. Preparation is the key to the success of all our church activities. At the forefront of these preparations is devotedly seeking the help of the Almighty God in our prayers. After that, we have coordinated with the authorities in this municipality and secured the necessary permits. The CFO officers and ministers who led this activity conducted a meeting and prepare all the things that will be used during the activity. According to Sansuk Municipality in Chonburi City, this volunteerism of Iglesia Ni Cristo in Coastal Cleanup Drive is very relevant. Today, as many trashes are found in the coastlines of Bangsen Beach. This is our simple way to show our support to the government, 
and to this community. Through activities like this, we are advocating environmental awareness and our moral obligation to care and protect the environment. สบายเมืองแสนสุขของเรานะครับเราให้ความสําคัญในการอนุรักษ์แล้วก็การพัฒนาคุณภาพสิ่งแวดล้อมนะครับเนื่องจากว่าเทศบาลเมืองแสนสุขของเราเนี่ยประกอบไปด้วยสิ่งแวดล้อมทั้งทางบกแล้วก็ทางทะเลในแต่ละปีเนี่ยมีจํานวนนักท่องเที่ยวเกือบ2ล้านคนรวมถึงมีจํานวนผู้ที่อยู่อาศัยจํานวนมากนะครับทั้งประชากรที่อยู่ประจําและประชากรแฝงนะครับเพราะฉะนั้นทําให้การรักษาสิ่งแวดล้อมและการพัฒนาสิ่งแวดล้อมควบคู่กันไปเนี่ยเป็นเรื่องที่เราให้ความสําคัญมากๆนะครับเนื่องจากว่าเราจําเป็นที่จะต้องมีการอนุรักษ์สิ่งแวดล้อมเพื่อให้เกิดความสมดุลระหว่างธรรมชาติและสิ่งแวดล้อมและก็การใช้พื้นที่ประโยชน์เพื่อการประกอบอาชีพและการใช้ประโยชน์เพื่อการท่องเที่ยวไม่ว่าจะเป็นโครงการที่เรารณรงค์ในการคัดแยกขยะนะครับรณรงค์ในการที่จะนําขยะกลับมาใช้ใหม่การลดใช้วัสดุที่ไม่เป็นมิตรต่อสิ่งแวดล้อมอย่างเช่นโครงการชายหาดปลอดโคมโครงการสารสุขสัปดาห์แสนสุขสะอาดที่จําเป็นจะต้องให้ความร่วมมือทั้งภาครัฐและเอกชนรวมถึงนักท่องเที่ยวผู้ประกอบการเนี่ยร่วมกันทําความสะอาดบ้านเมืองเป็นเชิงสัญ,ญลักษณ์เพื่อจะเป็นการรณรงค์ในการใช้พื้นที่ที่สะอาดร่วมกัน To our beloved executive minister brother Eduardo V Manalo we are indeed very grateful po for allowing us to conduct this activity you are our role model and inspiration in continuously serving the almighty god By doing good works, this activity served as a great way for the members of the Iglesia Ni Cristo and even the people in Chonburi to be more aware about the importance of maintaining our beaches and environment clean. From Bangsen Beach, Chonburi, Thailand, this is Jomerl Bundadbaldo, and we live in interesting times. And happy viewing to all our friends in Thailand, and of course, happy viewing to my best friend Marlene Joy Dugdo. And that is the latest news in the Southeast Asian nations. Stay updated about the ASEAN region. I am Crystal Mapa of ASEAN Bureau, sitting in for Alma Angeles. And stay in the news, and we'll be back tomorrow because we live in interesting times.